Hello everyone. Um, this is week three and while there are still so many lovely flowers and things in the garden to inspire me that I still want to paint, I have decided that I should demonstrate something other than flowers this week and as always when using the line and wash technique my attention goes to old doors which I just cannot resist. So this week I've chosen to to draw and paint with my line and wash technique this old door. I've not actually um, gone for a, a, a fancy door before. This is quite a fancy old door which has got lots of um, you know, markings and crevices and, and lovely sort of sculpture to it. And so it lends itself really well to, to this particular technique because I can, <clears throat> I can depict all of that detail with my pen and then, you know, wash over, not particularly carefully, but still I'll have the, the subject um, that you'll be able to still see. So, these are the colours that I'm going to use and again some of my favourite colours for old buildings and actually if I look into that photograph which has come out quite dull in some ways on the screen it looked um, really quite bright so I, I may just brighten it up a little bit. I did get it from Pixabay, I don't know this door but um, I think I'll be okay. Um, but do try and find something maybe that you would like to paint this time. And if it's something that you've got a photograph of, all, all good. But if you haven't, then you can look on pixabay.com and find similar things to this or whatever else you may feel you'd like to go for. Um, so these are the colours. And I just want to just show you that I'm using a 04 pen, pen this time, which is much stronger and going to give me a heavier line than the, the ones that I used um, with the flowers. So this actually, if I hold it nice and loosely and on its side, I can still get a fine um, line. But if I hold it a bit more straight, I can get a, a stronger line. And if I bear down more heavily, I can get a stronger line. So it's a lovely pen to use for buildings and so on. Um, so maybe try for a thicker one this time. Also, remember that you've got, some of you've got, the um, Tombow pen, which is quite good for painting buildings and things. And you can then blend some of the drawn lines into your subject, either keeping it the colour that it is, or you can add other colours. You can also, with the thicker end, get thicker lines, but you can also take a little bit of the ink, which it is, off the point of the pen, so that you can get, you know, darker edges and lines where you feel you might need it but that actually is a lovely pen for doing quick sketches and making really really nice end result for you this is a thick pen so if you've got some blocking in to do you can create blocked areas by filling in and you can always go back over the top with your pen again a bit later when it's dry if you need to. But they come in lots of different colours, but I've got the black and the brown that I use mostly. Um, I don't tend to use the coloured ones very much, but I do sometimes. 
Um, but they're great fun to use and actually I think are, are very, very good results for the things that we're doing this time. Um, so here's my drawing, which I've done. Holding the pen nice and loosely and being scribbly with my pen. Not having a hard, definite, one strong line around everything. I've gone back on myself, I've wobbled, and the texture of the paper will also help with that. And you'll get broken lines if you do leave them because they're going to look good. Um, and just draw, draw, draw. Don't pick the pencil up. Don't be tempted to draw first with the pencil and then again with the pen. It's pointless and, and not necessary. Especially with something where you can be quite scribbly like this. So, I'm going to use my 3 8 dagger brush and possibly also the size 7 Kalinsky sable brush. I'm going to start with the wall and just quickly put some water down and obviously I can go over the pen that's not going to go anywhere a little bit of it just ble bled there I don't know I've never had that happen before with one of those just, because I've only just drawn it I think it probably hasn't dried up enough so if you do a drawing with your pen make sure you give it time just to dry before painting over the top right so there's a selection of colors in this wall all sorts of lovely colors and uh, so I'm going to brighten it up as much as I can So I've got a transparent orange here, which I'm actually going to wash over the top here, into the wall. And I shall leave white paper, and I'll blend the colours, working around that sort of thing on the wall. So I'm not putting too much pigment on my brush, but just enough to keep that nice strong colour. So remembering that it is a wash, and you can deepen it while it's still wet, so that you're getting lovely patchy marks and some of it's come down onto the stonework on the doorway there. So I'm just going to create a little vignette, I was going to say vinaigrette, a little vignette um, and I've put marks where the mount might go so that I don't go right up to those marks because if it's a, a vignette it's got to have space left around it. So it's just a little vignette of this, which means part of something, part of this little building here. Right, I must have spent too much time on that. Um, but I will put a little bit of burnt umber dropped in on the top here and there just to give a bit more interest. Keeping that edge light so that it fades away. So when you're creating texture, which there is in this wall, you can actually touch a lot more than we do when we're painting flowers. So touch, 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 and that way you're going to get texture marks, you're going to have all this lovely blending happening. And popping in all these different colours. I moved this because it was actually in fact up there somewhere, which would have taken it way too far.
far away from the door and the eye would just have to travel up, up there and, and lose touch of the actual main subject. So think about things like that. Move things around if necessary in your work to make it look better and to create a better composition. This shadow around here. So in a minute, I think I'm gonna to have to stop and allow all this to dry before I start work on the, on the door. But I'll just finish this wall. There's also a letter box here, which is made of wood. So that will blend in nicely with the, with the color of the door. Different colors coming in down here now. Some more blue. I am following the colors in this wall quite a bit because I like them. sort of patches in the wall around the door where the plaster has come off and I'll just leave that for the moment until the rest is dry then I can get those shapes in better. that to dry. No. When you see all these different colours in these old stone walls, I guess it's because um, it's been painted over lots and lots of times, different colours. So don't be afraid to use lots of water. It's all going to dry up looking as it should with this technique, nice and washy and still allowing the pen to show through for the definition. Remembering the rule with the tonal value whereby if you're painting up, I know my, my stonework here, is actually quite light, so I'm painting darker beside it, darker than I see actually on the photo, which means my stonework will then show up and stand out well. Well, it's starting to dry up, I think, quite well. I love that bit there. So I'm not judging it too much yet, but I'm beginning to see that it's going to be quite nice. So I have touched that a lot, but it's okay. The other thing I can do is um, Make a sort of grey colour. 
brownie grey colour here and just splatter a bit on there while that's still wet. It's going to then make some stippled kind of marks for that bit of wall up there. That's going to make it look very old and scruffy. And while it's still wet, it's going to make nice marks in the, in the damp wall. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop, allow this to dry, and then carry on with the door. Okay. I've allowed it to dry. I dried it with a hairdryer, but I would suggest that you allow things to dry naturally if you possibly can. It does tend to, um, the hairdryer tends to push the paint into the, into the um, paper too much and, and sometimes makes it lighter and duller than it would automatically be. But um, I didn't have time, so. Um, right, so now I'm going to work on, I've also cleaned my palette. I'm going to work on the door and I can't think what these things are called on the wall. I know they've got a name. Someone will tell me perhaps. And I've changed now to my round brush because I think I need the con a different sort of control I think for this. Leaving white paper now more than I did on the wall I think if I can. It's all a lot easier to say than it is to actually do so keep it simple if you're a beginner and you haven't used this technique before, it's going to be so much better to create a simpler, much less complicated situation um, to create something simple well, rather than something more complicated, which could create disappointment. So remember, the, you know, just, if you haven't used this technique before, do, just try to keep it a little bit simpler. Right, so lots of aspects to this door. So I won't be washing right over the top, but I will actually take it section by section, leaving lots of white paper where necessary. Trying for a lighter and darker side. I can't really see any particular shadows on that photo. So I'm going to decide that this is going to be my darker side and leave this a bit lighter, shall I? Yeah, I think so, darker side this side. So you've got to think about all that sort of thing if there's nothing like that showing up on your photo. So these bricks are all sorts of different colours. So I've got some of that lovely orange going on again in there. So I'll actually paint the bricks first. And then I'll put the depth between the bricks when they're a little bit drier. So this is my opportunity to use different colours because there are lots of colours in those bricks. Trying to leave white paper showing for little touches of light and sparkle. It's 
quite fascinating the different colours that these things actually do end up. So I'm still holding my brush very loosely and putting little washes on, not being too detailed about it. Some little light stones at the bottom here. Right, I'll leave those and then I'll work between them in a minute. So I think I'll now just continue down, popping in. Similar colours to the ones that I'm seeing actually in the in the photo, which is helpful if you if you like what you're seeing in the photo. Obviously, it's going to be much easier to just follow it. But if there's something that you don't particularly like, remember that it is your own picture, and you can do what you like there. lovely orange colour seems to appear quite a lot. It's a crack there that I've drawn in. Now this wrought iron area is dark. So I'm hoping that that's going to show up through my dark colour. And putting this little edge of dark here is going to make that recess, which it is. So putting that depth there is going to help, keeping it lighter this side. Now this door is a very rich brown, so I've added to the burnt umber a little bit of the orange, keeping it nice limited palettes, but at the same time enriching that colour. Dark, dark, dark in there. So the Payne's Grey, the Winter and Newton Payne's Grey, not the Cotman Payne's Grey, is going to be a nice one to use in situations like this because it's got a lot of blue in it. So popping sort of depth in here and there to create good shape and pers perspective and Bit more character. Right, I'll work I think on the stones this side. So have all your colours out ready and mixed. The 
depending on your subject, you'll probably have to use different colours to, to the ones that I'm using. But these are colours that I often find myself going back to for buildings and so on. So it may not look as if I'm being careful, but I am actually thinking about what I'm doing all the time. Being washy doesn't necessarily mean that you can be careless. You still have to think carefully about what's going to work or what you hope is going to work and what isn't. have to think about perspective as well obviously. Right I'll go back to both those patches of stonework when it's completely dry to put in the, the depth between the stones. Right so I'm going to work on the door now which has got lots of colour. It's got blue here at the bottom going up to that lovely rich orangey brown colour at the top, so I'm going to go with that because I like it. Another thing I could have done and haven't would be to put some candle wax on, but maybe next week when I work on um, some buildings, which I'm hoping to do, I'll use some candle wax so that you can see how that works. But some of you know, so remember you, you can use the candle wax for creating old and scruffy marks in, in old doors and walls and things. But I haven't today, I'm just sticking with the watercolour. Right, blue. I think the door can be a little bit stronger, so I'm putting a little bit more pigment into my palette and making it slightly stronger. Starting with the blue down here. Work in the direction <clears throat> that you see the markings in the door if, you, if you're if you doing something like this. That way you leave, if you leave white paper, you'll be leaving the right shapes into the white paper. So I'm putting that down with a little bit of purple in this corner because I'm starting to see a little bit of purple there too. So then I'm hoping that when I pop the orangey colour on, it's going to mingle and create nice natural looking marks for me. I'm going to start at the top now and work down. go right over those markings because the pen is still going to show up.
Number 55, and they're not going to... They're making sure that everybody knows that. Those little carved out bits are recessed, so putting some depth in there is going to help that to look right. But don't put hard lines around everything. Right, I think that door's looking quite scruffy and full of character with all these different patches of colour which is the hope. This little thing blends into the door quite well. That's a little letterbox. an amazing door. Right, while I've got that colour going on, I'll do the box. Another number 55 on there. It's really nice to allow your colours to mingle on the page and not always mix them in your palette when you're doing something like this. Because what you're really looking for is a sort of patchwork effect sometimes, which we don't always want in our paintings, but this time I think we do. So I've got to now I wonder if my flat brush will help with that. Let's see, I've got a little flat brush here, which is a size three, pure sable. Whether I can use that to just go between flat brushes when working on buildings and things always are always helpful because they're all different sizes, but they make nice, easy marks for you. But I'm trying to vary the tones so that these little dark areas between the stones are not the same everywhere. That would look too contrived, so think about things like that, but going because this is the dark side and there's this little recess here, I'm taking it dark inside there onto the door. But it's helping those little stones to stand out and show up and it's sort of making them look a little bit more individual which is which they are one piled on top of another
couldn't make it up, could you? Trying to keep lighter here, but nevertheless doing a similar thing, but with a a weaker mix. Always look for variation in your paintings. Too much monotony or one thing one side and a similar thing the other side is just too symmetrical looking and irritates the eye. So try to keep in mind that you need to create variety. I don't need to put too many marks actually into the stonework because I've done that with my pen. I think it needs to be slightly stronger. And this side. And don't think you have to follow your pen lines, as I said before. Work beyond them, stay within sometimes. That's the thing that's going to loosen up. your washers as they go over the pen work. Okay, so I think I just need to ground it here and it's then complete. So you have to decide where to stop and not to keep going on and on and on because then it won't be you won't be using the technique that you're supposed to be using just right so in fact for some reason there's a bright blue foreground here but I don't know about that uh, <laughs> I think that might stop the eye from going up into the page if I put that into my painting so I think what I'll do is sort of mingle some of these colors that I've been using and create a, a sort of shadowy color that might end up looking natural slightly more natural than than that so what I'll do is um I'll just put some water down. And then I'll need some blue in it. Needs to be dark in here anyway, in this little alcove area. And making these little stones at the bottom here show up and creating the edge of the wall. But then I think I can just use some dry brush work and just keep it very simple to allow the eye to go up into the page to look at my door. darker here because it's the dark side. I think that's good enough.
Okay, so this is the point where you've got to sit and allow it to dry, go and have a cup of tea, leave it alone for a bit, then come back and see if there's anything that you want to do. But I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment anyway. And so that was where I put my little marks. So I think I've stuck to the rule there. So it's a vignette. I hope you can see what I've done. I hope you think it's okay. It looks old, it looks shabby, craggy. Um, and you can take more time over your paintings than I've been able to. But I don't know that I would have done a lot more that's, you know, anything different particularly. So, as I've said, um, have a good time this week and choose your own subject. Anything that inspires you, anything at all, using this technique. Um, but if you're a beginner, please remember to create a small and simple painting and paint it well. Um, here's, a, here's a simpler door that I did. Um, it hasn't actually got all the sort of carving and things like that, it's just got planks. So if you looked on Pixabay, you might find something like that, or we may have something yourself. Um, but that's a much simpler door, but if you paint it well, it's going to be better than trying to get all the complication going on. Um, so I look forward to seeing your pictures and to help you where I can. Um, and next week, um, I'll be working on buildings, I think. I'll create a, a, a full-blown scene um, with some buildings in it and try not to look in the garden because there's still things in there I want to paint. But maybe I'll do some preliminary sketches of some of the things that I still want to paint, like the magnolia or whatever, um, if it's looking a bit better. So see you next week, everyone. Have a good week. Take care. Bye-bye.